Alright, so we're going to attempt another classic play. This is going to be a sort of ambitious, maybe over ambitious for a video, but we'll try and tie the blackers ballies on them. So first, I'll show you how to make a gut loop substitute. And this here is a bunch of horsehair or violins. And this was a coffee frother. And I cut the end of it off and I made a hook. So if I loop over, this is a large fly, so I've looped over and made uh, two strands here. And if I use that to tighten it up, the real tight cord, fold it, it will twist on itself, and then you can add extra twists to that and you'll get something that's very close to gut. And rub that with wax. And I'll twist it up some more. It's also quite pliable. And ready to use now instead of like with your normal gut having to soak it etc. So I'm gonna wax up our thread. Shank of our hook and tie that on. Now, this fly has a, a dubbed body, so it doesn't really matter about the taper in these, but if you want, just take your scissors. A lot of people like their loop to be quite circular. I've never seen the point in that because the idea whenever it was fishing, you know, something was going to be attached to it and pulling it. So any of you ever see an old one, they're all quite in setbacks on them are totally flat together because they've probably played a fish. You can leave it like that if you want, or just take a runny glue or varnish and just varnish into the the eye and that will set it so that it should never fall apart. Now this fly is traditionally tied with a puce tag. However if you look at the uh, illustration in blacker there's clearly a tinsel portion at the back of it and it's most likely silver. So I'm going to put in silver tinsel tip. I'm going back here to a point roughly level with the back of my barb. thread down and seeing where my point is. And I'm going to wrap on a few touch and turns of tinsel, take that turn off. And then I want to get my tinsel 
underneath. Use. Some sort of mauve colour. Although I think there's all sorts of descriptions. It could be anything. So I'll take a portion of this mauve sort of. with my lovely hands. Do a wrap back until I hit that tinsel portion and then start to come forwards again. I generally wrap my tag beyond the point it needs to be. Because I'll then tie my tail down onto the top of it and continue my wraps backwards. So. natural at all and certainly whenever the fly would have been fished. It's not natural, it's not natural for your toppings of the wings to meet either. So it's a fairly big fly. So what I'm gonna do I'm using quite a long flat topping. You can do something called breaking the back of that, which is if this is tied in good and firm so it doesn't slip. If I grab the tip and run my needle up underneath that, it will flare out the topping. Ibis, so I have two matching sided ibis there. I'll take two fibers out of each side. slightly tented. You can also use your topping the stock of it to do this too. Silver. 
ignomed. Twist. Flip over and tie that. And I'm going to use it to tie up to here, which was where our gut ended. And that'll sort of even out the taper in the body there. Generally, we avoid slapping and stuff, but this is one play that I think, when you're tying it for show like this, that it does suit. So uh, I've got a bunch of yellow slapping. I'm just going to look through it for something. A little bit of taper to it, hopefully. section of it so I'm just folding up the hackle there and doubling it overall itself. Then I'll take the very tip of it and I'm going to tie it in on my side tight up to the tinsel. calls for a uh, sort of olive yellow brown mohair so I have a mix here and uh, because it's a very long body we'll put this on in several portions some people just put on straight yellow so set that on my I'm trying not to let it gauge my hackle fibers once I've tightened up, what I'll do is take a couple of laps off so I have spare thread and come back. Twist it up tight again because this is the starting point. Just want to check that we don't have any gap at the back. And then I'll wrap that up the body. As we start to run out, more on so that it engages with the previous bit. because we've got lots of wing components and a hurl head to go on at the front. So now if I take my large tinsel the tinsel back down it. Let's see how we get on with that, but if that's too long for our hackle we might have to put that and put on less turns. I want to twist it 
over on itself and get it tight up in behind our tinsel. But I'm twisting the stalk of it so that it's laying sort of flatter into the body rather than sticking out perpendicularly. Certainly more so at the back, at the front, you can start to let it flare out that little bit. Just right. And I like to put on a turn or two at the front, if the hackle length allows it. Just. swap over to black tying thread. I've had this done before the start. So I'll give myself a base for tying my way. So So, toppings in the center of it. So I'm going to use the same one as I used for my tail. These are quite long, flat toppings. onto our thread.
some progressively longer ones here. This time I'm going Use flat nose pliers. Switch the other side. It's 
the two up then and strip them both down to the same point. And they tend to have quite a curve in them, so if you just take your nail and just on the outside of it here, I'm just pinching every sort of few mil and that'll straighten out the stock. within it a bit and hopefully they will hold it. Ready thing on the side of this one.
see him from the other side of the pillar. golden pheasant. It's quite difficult to get golden pheasant with enough length for this one. Bring that up and underneath behind the, the white tip. Then they talk about Himalayan pheasant. Uh, it calls it hen Himalaya pheasant in the description, but that could be anything. Um, most people take it to mean a mono, I think, and therefore use male mono tail, but I want to use something you know, which is just like a cinnamon turkey for that. flies that tend to be quite straggly, messy almost, and that to me suits fishing, and the tendency is to try and over control the tie-in of the fly. So I guess what we're trying to achieve here is organized chaos. Dressing calls for a hen or calls for golden pheasant uh, tail and neck. So we presume that to mean golden pheasant tail and then uh, tippet. So the tippet's quite difficult to get the lie straight, so what I like to do is take a large tippet, nip out. to give myself a sort of like a V and I lay the fly on its side and I tie it in across the stock and that gives me two strands controlled it also pushes in my other materials them in against the wing when they have a tendency to disappear every which way and then I repeat the process on this side
It also calls for Guinea. So I'm just going to split off a little bunch of Guinea. center of the forks of the golden pedant that I put on. likelihood is that this light was tied a hell of a lot smaller than this and they actually did use uh, Amherst crest and also a lot of the flies you see sometimes there's like a, quite a short crest on top uh, now again modern convention seems to be in to move to tie much larger flies like this this one here is going for a frame for somebody so I've dyed a golden pheasant in red and that's going to go out over the top of this thing because it's just not possible to get an Amherst crest longer than about that and there it is so flatten that out cheeks on this one calls for kingfisher so I'm going to use some of the larger sort of coverts from down near the base of the tail. Thank you. 
starter. The throat it calls in this uh, is a red hackle wrapped as a collar, so I'm going to wrap that in front of the wing here over the portion that I have created here. And I'm going to use a red schlappen on this one. So I need one that has fibers. with the yellow ones that we have. start to see the fly sort of gaining the final sort of Bally Shannon look about it.
lots of You can wrap on her head backwards, forwards, whichever way you want. Um, I'm going to show you a bit of a tip or cheat, whatever you want to call it. So if you take the length of your tie-in thread and make it into a loop, Tie the loop in underneath. Wrap backwards. And leave it there. I'm going to heavily wax my thread. You can't see this, but I'm actually I'm just going to spin my bobbin. It'll tighten up the thread, and it'll create like a tighter cord, so that when I actually wrap this on, then it'll almost create steps. I'm going to get as much wax as I can off my fingers. I take my hair. I'm leaving my thread attached in case I need it. And I'll just leave it over there, but you could actually finish that off at that stage. And break my hair. Down to the front, and then I slide my tweezers through the loop, and pull the other end of this loop so as it tightens in. I'll actually pull under itself. And then if I wet the hurl, really wet it, stroke it back. shape. When that dries up, it'll make a nice smooth even hurl head. Now 
and just use your tweezers to reposition some of those materials around. And so I've waited a wee while for the spit basically that was on the head to dry and what I also did was I took down a hot lamp and stuck that up against it and that sort of sped that up a little bit as well. And now what I'll do is I'll take like a fine mascara brush and just brush backwards as it's drying. And that'll align up all of the fibres in it. That dries up fully. It'll come out a little bit, but it'll maintain that nice bullet shape. And finally, we just need to place a few materials and use our scar brush. I'm just going to put a curve into our hackles. And it's a blacker's belly shannon ready for a frame.